So unless you've been living under a rock in the YouTube world for months or years, um, you probably already know who Justin Rose is. He's got a really, really, really great channel. He updates like daily. And I believe he refers to himself as the Chicken Ninja. He has a lot of experience with poultry and specifically putting that poultry to work. So I've been watching him for a really, really long time and I've been inspired. Now, right now we're in the middle of freezing cold winter and I'm getting cabin fever and I'm excited to get outside and start working on some projects. So my brain has been going a mile a minute trying to figure out, okay, what are those projects going to be and coming up with strategies. So I was rewatching a lot of his old videos to get, to get ideas and come up with like a cohesive plan. So I've identified like the five ways, the five best strategies to put your poultry to work inspired by Justin Rhodes and a little bit of Joel Salatin and Paul Gochi, you know, those other people who really know how to work their poultry. So number one, scrap processing. So take advantage of the fact that chickens are basically just tiny velociraptors. They are the feathered pigs of the farm. They will eat pretty much anything. I mean, we tend to think of them as like pecking at corn and grain, but it doesn't stop there. It, they will devour all sorts of flora and fauna, and you need to take advantage of that. I personally, anything that comes out of our kitchen, I give it to them. And you'll read online a lot of lists of things you should not should and should not feed them. Unless you're straight up feeding them like arsenic and mercury and plutonium, they'll probably be fine. Now, I, it's a whole separate topic, so we'll get into it later, perhaps, but in general, I, everything that comes out, food scraps, you know, just uh, vegetable peelings, um, even meat, I will, I will put out for them, and they love it, and they eat it right up. And right now, my chickens are eating like crazy, all that stuff, and producing eggs in the middle of winter. So, they get a lot, a lot of nutrition. And the great thing is, what else are you going to do with that? I mean, you can throw it on a compost pile, but it's better to filter that through some chickens and then get eggs out of it. So I think that's a really great strategy to take care of those scraps and, and not let those go to waste and certainly not put them in the garbage so they just rot in a landfill and create methane. And Number two, composting. So this is kind of related to the scrap processing. Now right now I use my chicken run as my compost pile. So I will take everything from my kitchen and throw it out to them. And they eat most of it. So in all fairness, they don't eat everything. Things like orange peels, they get really, they don't like eating those. They don't like really citrusy things in general, I've noticed. So, but whatever they don't eat just falls on the ground and composts anyway. It just mixes with the, the wood chips or the straw or whatever carbon or matter I put out there and their, in their poop and composts down really, really fast. Like I'm blown away by how fast chickens can work through compost. I throw, during the summer, I threw piles of wood chips in with my chickens and they broke down into really great dirt over the course of like a month. I couldn't believe it. Like big wood chips. Not like just tiny little shavings or sod. It's like big wood chips. They work through it. It's great. And Justin Rode really puts his chickens to work with the compost. It's, it's really amazing what he does. So composting. Get your scraps out there. Let the chickens turn it. Let the chickens add their nitrogen source to it. Let the chickens do the work for your compost and make it all the better for it. Number three, land clearing. Okay, so I have goats, and they do a pretty good job with land clearing, um, but then you have to deal with the fact that they're goats, and they do goat things. And if you're a long-time watcher of this channel, you, you know my ongoing frustration with goats. But chickens can clear land too. They can't get up really, really high necessarily, but they will tear down greenery like everywhere that you put those chickens they're going to clear it out and if you let them they'll tear it right to the ground so uh, get those put those chickens to work put them in area if you can fence them in an area that you want to clear uh, let them go and they will take things down now the larger stuff like the thick brush you'll probably have to cut down and then lay down for them so they can get to the greenage that they can get to the green foliage but go ahead and do that put them to work they will clear land for you i promise you so number four is, is preparing gardens, and that actually kind of plays into the clearing land. You put them in an area, like right now I'm doing the Back to Eden Gardens, and I'm clearing more and more land in 25 by 25 foot squares. I could take one of my 100 foot length of poultry netting, put that in a 25 by 25 foot square, release some chickens in there, and they're going to 
not only going to clear any grass or land that's there, they will prepare that land for gardening by, again, adding their nitrogen source and processing anything else you add to that. So they're going to take things down, process it, and leave behind really nutrient-rich soil for you. So number five is definitely straight out of Justin Rhodes' playbook. So talking about moving these chickens around to clear land and to prepare garden space, the whole point of that is, the, the, the secret to that is mobile and keeping them mobile and having mobile coops. Chicken tractors, mobile coops, or specifically what Justin Rhodes calls a chickshaw, which I think is very, very clever. You should definitely check out his videos relating to that. Just so you know, I'm going to put links to his channels and links to some cool videos of his in the description of this video, so be sure to check them out. But the chickshaw I think is amazing and it's a great mobile coop plan. And and you can take those chick chickens basically anywhere. You just move them to a new area that you want to process, that you want to clear, that you want to prepare for a garden, and there you go. It's really, really a brilliant strategy. And those are my five strategies for how to put those freeloading chickens to work that is straight out of Justin Rhodes' playbook. So if you like this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. And if, you're, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Please join me on this journey because I've got so much poultry going on. I've got, I've got 10 chickens out in the coop right now, 10 ducks, Indian runner ducks, and I have 15 uh, chicks in the brooder that are going to be ready to go outside in the spring. So that's a whole lot of poultry, and I'm going to put them to work, and I've got some really great ideas of how I want to do that. I'm building a new coop, creating an expansive run, and I'm really going to push the limits of what you can do with poultry on your homestead. So I hope you join me for that adventure, and thank you for watching, and I hope you have a really great day. Put your chickens to work. Goodbye. So those are my five strategies. Cut. So those are my five strategies. I did ten. Ducks out there. Now ten chickens out there, and I have fifteen. So those are my five strategies for how to put those freeloading chickens to work and make them earn their keep. Sure, they give you a little, they give you some eggs every now and again, but you need to get more. Shit. Jesus. This is supposed to be a family show, goddammit.